Hey guys, today we're checking out the HP T5720 Thin Clients for the purpose of PC retro gaming. And without spoiling the video too much, this is one of the best Thin Clients for this purpose, especially for Windows 98 and DOS retro gaming. Here we have the regular T5720, which you can readily find on places such as eBay. But the one we're gonna check out is the one on the left. You can see it's taller. This one has the expansion bay, so it adds a PCI slot, which you can use to upgrade a graphics card, for example, or install a DOS compatible sound card. Here we can nicely see the difference from the back. So in terms of ports and connectors, they are identical, but this unit is a little bit taller. And here we have the PCI slot. Just like in a few previous Thin Client videos, we're working with Richard. He runs an eBay store in the US. You're looking at only 35 US dollars for such a unit that is excluding postage. And especially if you're from overseas, uh, the shipping cost can be quite expensive. But do keep in mind that a lot of sellers sell just the optional PCI expansion bay for similar amounts of money. Included is RAM, but the flash module is not included and you're also getting the power supply. So let's have a closer look at the unit. We've got the power button here. There's a power LED, hard drive, activity LED and two USB ports. At the back, Kensington lock, power supply, serial parallel VGA, two PS2 ports, audio out, microphone input, four USB 2 ports, Ethernet and another Kensington lock. The machine is 25 centimeters wide, just under 21 centimeters deep and eight centimeters tall. And here we have the power supply. It's rated at 12 volts and 4.16 amps. And it uses a standard PC power cable. So now we're gonna open the unit and have a look inside. We just need to open these two screws. Once we remove the screws, we need to grab the top of the machine and we're just gonna push this towards us and then carefully lift it up. There's a little cable here, which goes to a speaker, which connects to the motherboard. So you just gotta disconnect that and then remove the top cover. And here we have the machine open. So this is the motherboard. We have two coolers here with uh, heat pipes. These are passively cooled. Here's the PCI riser card, which is included with this machine. And I have a spare machine, which I removed the motherboard from. So we're gonna have a closer look at the motherboard and all the stuff that's going on there. So this is a lot easier to work with. We can get a closer look at all the components. Let's start with the processor. So this is an AMD Geode NX 1500, runs at one gigahertz. This is basically an Athlon XP. It has a unlocked multiplier downwards, so you can change the multiplier in software in Windows 98 and in MS-DOS between 3X and 7.5X. And it runs at only one volts of uh, vCore and has a TDP of only nine watts. The processor is removable, so you could swap this for a slower AMD Geode processor, for example. Down here, we can see the chipset, the SIS741CX and the SIS963L. Here goes the coin battery. On my machine, the battery was flat and I got a, an error when turning on the machine, so you might have to replace the battery. Here we have the memory slot. It can fit one SODIMM DDR memory module. Uh, it came with a 512 stick of DDR 333. And the maximum I was able to get out of this machine was a one gigabyte model of DDR400. And up here we have a standard 44 pin ID interface, which lets you use various adapters and converters. So you can use SD cards, M SATA SSDs, M.2 SSDs, but you can also uh, just plug in a normal two and a half inch mechanical hard drive. And down here we've got a PCI slot and that opens a lot of options. If you're looking for building a Windows 98 or Windows XP retro gaming PC, you can uh, install a fast 3D graphics card like a, a River TNT2, for example, or a GeForce 6200, which I actually will be doing in this video. And if you're looking to build a DOS machine, you can install a DOS compatible PCI sound card, which is also something we will look at in this video. 
Okay, so we had a look inside the machine. Now I'm going to install Windows XP. We're going to benchmark the integrated graphics as well as the G460 200. Then we're going to check out Windows 98 and then MS-DOS. So for Windows XP, I'm going with a 1 gigabyte RAM module just to help out a little bit with the performance. And for storage, we're using a 64 gigabyte MSATA SSD together with a MSATA 2ID adapter. So the first thing I did was flash the latest BIOS, which you can get from the HP website. I booted off a USB floppy drive and then the BIOS flash started automatically. Next up, I installed Windows XP. I used the easy to boot project. I actually did a video tutorial on how to do that. So you can install Windows XP off a USB flash drive. And next I had to install some drivers. Windows XP detected most of the devices, but I did install the AGP chipset driver, the SIS graphics driver, and also the Realtek audio drivers. And then I ran 3 Mark 2000 with the integrated graphics. We've got results for the HP T5720 and also two out of thin clients that we looked at in previous videos. And we can see that the HP is taking the lead. Moving on to Quake 3, the faster processor, it's basically a Athlon XP running at 1 GHz, makes all the difference. And even at 1024 by 768, we're getting 44.5 FPS, which is ahead of the other thin clients. A few more notes on the integrated graphics. I did try Quake 2 and Expandable. Those games also worked, but I didn't uh, test more games to look for compatibility. I also noticed that if you use a DDR400 module, your performance will go up by around 20% because of the faster memory. And now we're going to upgrade the graphics card. So the fastest PCI video card I have is a GeForce 6200. And I've been using this video card in uh, the other thin client as well. So we've got a nice comparison. So we're back in Quake 3. We don't have a result for the Wise CX0 because that one doesn't have a PCI slot. But the Wattman does. And we can see the faster processor making a real difference. We're getting roughly a 30% performance boost and Quake 3 is now extremely playable on this machine. Also under Windows XP as well as Windows 98 SE you can run software to lower the multiplier between 400 megahertz and 1 gigahertz. I also had a go at running DOSBox. Here we have Win Commander. This is the GUG version and it runs perfectly fine. So Windows XP was a great success. Everything was working. Now with the other two thin clients that we checked out in previous videos, we had issues with Windows 98 SE. So let's find out how this machine is gonna fare. I downgraded the RAM to 512 megabyte to be more compatible with Windows 98. So the installation process for Windows 98 was slightly different. I used a USB floppy drive to boot from a Windows 98 boot disk. Then I partitioned and formatted the solid state drive and made it bootable. I then turned off the machine, ejected the solid state drive and hooked it up to my Windows desktop. And here I copied the Windows 98 installation files over and then ran the Windows installation from the thin client. With the drivers, we had more unknown devices compared to Windows XP. So I installed the AGP chipset drivers, then the graphics drivers, also the sound drivers. I also had to install the Ethernet drivers to get the network going, as well as the USB drivers. And then I ran into some issues with the IDE storage driver, especially with enabling the DMA mode. Um, I've seen this in the past, certain chipset combinations with certain uh, storage devices will render the DMA mode uh, basically inoperable. It will uh, lock up the machine. And that's what happened with the MSATA to ID adapter. So I then tried a mechanical hard drive and here the DMA mode worked just fine. So just be prepared if you're using one of those uh, modern ID to SATA or SSD adapters that the DMA mode might not work. And I ran into some issues with the sound card. In certain games, the sound would just suddenly stop playing. The fix is easy. You run DX Diag, which is a control panel for DirectX. And you go to the sound tab. And there's a slider for sound acceleration. And you just move it to one setting to the left. But apart from that, all the drivers were working. We have got 3D graphics as well as sound. Now, I did run a few benchmarks. I didn't create any charts, but I noticed that the performance under Windows 98 was slightly slower compared to what we saw under Windows XP, but really nothing major. We're talking a couple of FPS. Also, I had a look at the integrated sound card. Does it work under DOS? So I opened a MS-DOS prompt 
and we can see a set blaster variable. However, the results were mixed. In Doom, for example, I would get uh, sound effects, but in Duke Nukem 3D, I would only get music. So yeah, not ideal. So if you're interested in DOS gaming, we're gonna install a PCI sound card. But before that, we're gonna have a look at DOS benchmark results. At 320 by 200, all the thin clients are doing well, getting hundreds of FPS, even in Doom and Quake, over 100 FPS. So DOS games are perfectly playable. Once we switch to 640x480, we can see the stronger processor in the HP really making a difference. In Quake, for example, we're getting 30 FPS. We can boost that further by running fast vid. And you can see here in Quake now, we're getting 65 FPS. So not only is that ahead of the other thin clients, it's also extremely playable. So if you want to play Quake in DOS at 640x480, then this machine will do that. When playing DOS games, there are quite a few games that are speed sensitive and will have issues on fast processors. And there are two things you can do in this machine. The first one is using the set mal utility. You can disable the internal CPU cache. And the other tool we have at our disposal is from Falcosoft. He wrote a tool to change the multiplier and that works even under DOS. So you can lower the processor speed to 400 megahertz. And the end result is that you can turn this into a fast 386, so you get the equivalent of a 386 DX40 or 486 SX25, uh, around about there. So a little bit too fast for Wing Commander, but a lot of other games will become playable. And for DOS gaming, the PCI slot comes in super handy. We can install a uh, PCI sound card, and this one is really good for DOS gaming. This is the Yamaha YMF744. I've actually done a video review on this card, and the seller still has this new in box uh, up for grabs. So have a look at that video if that interests you, and the purchase link will be down below in that video as well. So guys, let's wrap up this video. This is really one of the best thin clients I've seen so far for Windows 98 and DOS Retro Gaming. So we've got a decent processor, one gigahertz Athlon XP, plenty of performance. The integrated graphics has a decent performance, to be honest. You can play most older Windows 98 games just fine. The storage is upgradable to all sorts of options. I've done a video on uh, storage options for thin clients. I will put a card up on the screen for you to check out. We've got plenty of ports, six USBs in total, serial, parallel, PS2, it's all there. Excellent DOS performance at 320 by 200, pretty much any game will be butter smooth. And even games at 640x480, once you load fast vid, should also become playable. You can downclock the processor to 400 megahertz and disable the CPU uh, cache for speed sensitive games. And the PCI slot opens the door to all sorts of projects. If you're building a Windows 98 project, then you can install a faster 3D graphics card. But if you want to focus on DOS, I recommend you install a DOS compatible PCI sound card. The machine is also passively cooled, so it doesn't make any noise, which is also nice. The list of negatives is quite small. We had issues with the DMA mode not working with some storage devices, um, but that really depends on the combination of adapter and storage device you're using, so your experience might be different. Also, the BIOS has very few options, especially the ability to use more than 16 megabytes for the graphics card would have been nice to uh, increase that to 32 or something like that. And finally, that's just my personal opinion, the machine is a little bit more bulky compared to uh, other thin clients, for example. And there you have it, guys. That was the HP T5720, a really interesting thin client for retro PC gaming. As always, any comments, feedback, suggestions, leave them down below in the comments, especially if you have used this thin client uh, yourself or if you have another model that might be interesting for the channel. And as always, guys, if you found this video interesting, give it a like, sub to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I shall see you soon with another one.